So around about a month ago, I said, if you would like a video on Irish cat folklore, please let me know because I would love to do that. And everybody made it very clear that you really wanted a cat folklore video. You ask, I deliver. In this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at some of the cat folklore in Ireland, some of the superstitions and beliefs about whether cats are good or bad luck, their ability to predict the weather, and also their connection to the good folk or the fairies. So whether you're a cat lover or you're just curious about Irish folklore, this video is for you. Hello and welcome, it's Misha Amy the Crafty Kylock and I make videos about Irish history, folklore, food and magic. I am a historian in training and I am currently completing a master's in Irish regional history and I make videos on the internet about Irish history, folklore and things I find interesting relating to those subjects. If you like this video, please think about giving it a thumbs up to help tell YouTube that you like my videos, which helps boost the channel and also just helps me know that you like the content that I'm doing so I can keep doing this type of content. If you've seen either of my weather lore videos where I talk about the weather superstitions in Ireland, I have two, so I have a general one and I have a winter edition. So I will leave those in the description below if you wanna check those out. So in those videos, I talk about various different animals and birds that can help us predict the weather and cats are one that crop up time and time again when I'm doing research on weather lore. It said that when cats scratch at a broom that windstorms are coming. If cats eat grass or clean behind their ears or clean their face it's supposed to indicate wet weather. Other signs of bad or windy weather included cats scratching tables or legs of tables and turning or sitting at the fire with their back to the fire. Or another indicator of windy weather would be if cats are climbing up high, for instance, going up trees or climbing up on walls. It's also said that the colder it gets, if we're supposed to get very cold weather and snow, that cats sit very, very close to the fire. Other beliefs and omens around cats and their domestic behaviors can also include cats kind of predicting the outcome of an illness. So one account that I found on the National Folklore Commission's schools collection on dukas.ie said that if a cat was in the house and there was someone sick, if the cat went into the room, that the person would get better. But if the cat left the house and stayed away from the home while the person was sick, then it wasn't going to be a good outcome. This account also referenced that when a cat started going away from the house and crying or meowling in a very languish, lonely manner that this was called the Banshee. The Banshee in Irish folklore, the fairy woman, is said to do a sort of keening or queena, which is a lament that effectively predicts the death of people. And if you've ever heard cats, particularly cats at night during the summer, they do sound like wailing, screaming, torture. But the Banshee is a completely separate figure in Irish folklore. However, I have found lots of references to cats being associated with the she or the fairies. So firstly, looking at fairy forts, I found various different associations between cats and fairy forts. One reference to a fairy fort in County Limerick said that during the summer it was numerous with fairies and cats and that when people would be milking their cows late into summer evenings they would hear screeching of cats from the fairy fort that sounded like banshee. Another story from County Kerry tells of a man that is riding a horse near a fairy fort and sees a group of cats come out of the fort and by the time he dismounts and goes to look to see what's going on, the cats have disappeared. Another reference that I found a lot was to this sort of hierarchical court of cats, where there would be a king of cats. And all of these stories just remind me of the Cat Returns, which is that Studio Ghibli movie. So some of the stories referenced groups and communities of cats coming from all over the country to elect under a full moon, the king of the cats. In County Cavan, there's a reference to Crowan Hill, which was a hill locally that was covered in shrubbery and briars. 
and it was said to be infested with a whole host of wild cats. And people from the locality would be very wary of going in there without any defensive weapons to fend off cats should they need to. So while sometimes cats were seen jumping from rock to rock and being kind of aggressive, at other times they would be very tame and go around to the houses. It's also said that they had the power of speech and that they would crown their king cat every year and that one of these kingly cats was called Shiva Girth. I also found some references to fairies taking cat form, so transforming into cats to protect gold or forts or lists. One account talks about people going to a fairy fort to look for some gold and in return the fairies then turned into cats and went around following those people shouting and mewing at them. There's also the cat she which is a concept not just in Irish folklore but in Celtic folklore in general particularly in Scotland. So on Dukas there's various references to fairy cats or cat she and also fairy dogs or cushy. Fairy dogs are completely separate video. There's some references to the specific colorings of the cat she or the fairy cats. So one particular reference said that they were all white and there is a commonality or trend of animals, particularly fairy animals, being all white in Irish folklore or all black. I have seen some references as well where fairy cats were all black and bigger than normal cats. And also some references that said they were the same size as normal cats. In one particular story that I found, there was white cats, all white cats that were associated with a particular fairy fort and congregation, and that the dogs and cats both appeared for seven nights at this particular fort, where lights could be seen and music could be heard for seven nights in a row. And then afterwards, there was no trace of lights, fairies, or Kushi, but the cats remained on. I did find a lot of stories where cats were acting strangely, as in they weren't acting like cats and they were speaking. So one story from Kinsale in County Cork tells of a cat arriving at a house and being effectively taken in by the family and cared for, which isn't out of the ordinary. But then one day, as the family are sitting around waiting for dinner, another cat comes along stands outside the threshold of the door and announces the death of a neighbour. The cat who has been taken in by the family then leaves with the cat that has just arrived. Another story from Kinsale of a talking cat tells of a man at night who is just at home having a smoke off his pipe and the cat turns around to him and asks for a smoke. This is something that also crops up in changeling stories where the changeling baby will ask for a smoke or ask for a glass of whiskey or poutine, thus revealing themselves as a fairy changeling. That account from Kinsale also references that at the time of people would have been of the belief that cats were in ancient times able to talk and communicate and that if you listened to cats fighting at night, you would be able to understand what they were fighting about. Another story about cats or fending off cats tells of a man getting the gift of a sword to help him fight fairy cats, and he gets the sword from a leprechaun. Another story called The Cat's Dance tells of a man who is walking home one night and hears music and a party effectively in a nearby barn. When he goes to investigate, he sees a group of cats dancing and another cat who's like playing a fiddle. You might have also heard of Kilkenny cats. So the cats are basically a kind of nickname for the Kilkenny GAA teams. And there's a couple of different stories about how Kilkenny cats came to be. One story that I found on Dukas talks about a visitor coming to Kilkenny Castle and with her she brought mice for some reason. This wasn't noticed until the mice began to multiply and then they had to effectively order in some cats to deal with the rodent problem. So soon after getting in all the cats, instead of being filled with mice, the castle was filled with cats and that's where the name apparently came from, Kilkenny Cat. 
There's another couple of stories, one which says that two cats were fighting to the point where there was just two tails left from the cat, saying that they effectively fought to the death or that they tried to eat each other. While another folktale talks about how one of the rulers of Kilkenny was like a mouse king, but I haven't been able to verify origins for that one. In terms of being good or bad luck, black cats always get a really bad rep. So actually, instead of being bad luck, black cats are supposed to be very good luck. They're supposed to bring good luck, not only good luck, but also new lovers. If you find a black cat at your new home after you move into it, it's supposed to be very good luck. And if a black cat crosses your path, it's supposed to actually be lucky. But if any other cat does it, it's supposed to be unlucky. I also found a story about luck and fortune being bestowed upon a cat owner that treated their cat particularly well. That sounds like fake cat propaganda. Hello. So in this particular story from County Tipperary, a man called Tom is walking home from the village and here's all this commotion coming from the local Norman fort. So he went to investigate and found that there was a group of cats that were all talking and having this meeting. Leading this meeting was the captain or king of the cats. The king of the cats asked all the kitty subjects to report back on how they were being treated. She just farted. So as they, all of these cats were going around talking about how their owners treated them. So when it got to Tom's cat, Tom's cat was very complimentary about how he had been treating her. The story finishes off saying that that night when Tom went home, he dreamed about what he had seen. And ever since then, he was waiting for his bag of gold. Cats don't only feature in Irish folklore. There is also a ninth century poem that's written by an Irish monk, which talks about his work as a monk and his white cat. Pangerborn is the name of the poem. I will link it below with the translation and I'll also link a recent Blind Boy podcast episode that he did talking about this 9th century poem. And then last but certainly not least, there is Awanagat, which is the Cave of the Cats, which is in the Cruelcon Royal Complex in County Roscommon. So particularly in relation to an epic tale in the Ulster Cycle called Breaku's Feast, this cave is associated with some otherworldly cat guardians. If you'd like to find out more about Awanagat, I will put some links down in the description below. And I'll also link to Tara Tyne's video where she actually went into Ireland's Hell Cave. I really hope you enjoyed this video on cat folklore. It was really fun to research and talk about. As a cat parent myself, I never get sick of cats. So it was really interesting for me to research into cat folklore, do a little bit of a Dukas dive, and then get to tell you all about superstitions about cats and their associations with fairies. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, and hit the subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you thought in the comments and if you'd like me to do more of a focused dive on the cat she or the fairy cat or the coo she, let me know in the comments and I will put that on the list of content I'll be bringing you very shortly. But Chine. Garamila Magadas Jacks, thank you very much. Garamila Magadas Jacks, thank you very much for coming. I'll see you soon.